This request came in by email, uh, quite an extensive email, but I'll just read a portion of it to you. He says, while sorting through old photos, I found a picture of our daughter when she was about five or six uh, playing outside blowing bubbles. I would like to know how to create those bubbles. Guess what? It's all about observation. If you've been watching lots of my quick tips, you'll know that there's one thing I keep repeating. And that is very important thing. When you're trying to, when you want to paint an image, if it's the image itself you're going for, you're going to be in the dark. What I mean by that is all visual images are made up of visual elements. There are, there's value, there's color, there's shape. And if that's what we're looking for, we get our clues and we know what to do if we have the skills to do them. So the first thing about bubbles, when, when, uh, when a kid is blowing bubbles, they're transparent, like wine glasses, like anything that's transparent, which means you can see through it. You can see what's behind it. And when you look at those bubbles, you see, you see in this example right here, you see this continuing in here and in here, on up to here and back and forth and so on. So one technique for creating bubbles is to paint the scene first and let it dry so that you can then create the bubbles on top of the scene. Now you can do it wet, uh, but you still it still helps an awful lot, makes it easier for you if you paint whatever's behind those bubbles. If you put that in and get it just like you want it first, and then you form those bubbles on top. So I'm not going to show you the wet on wet method. That's a little bit trickier. Uh, I think if you learn the wet on dry, and when I say wet on dry, I mean the paint is wet and the surface is relatively dry. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you the skill, uh, the observation skill, and the technical skill uh, for if you want to paint bubbles. All right, so here's, this is uh, the example that I chose this one because of the, the content of the email. But what I want you to notice about this, if we take the value scale and we isolate, so I've got the value scale here, you can get this from the website by just going to dynamize.com, click, click on free stuff in the menu, and then find the traditional value scale. And you can print this, print it, and then take a hole puncher and just punch holes uh, through each of those little values. So if I take the value scale and I hold it up, to the image and, I, and now I'm looking here through this particular value I'm looking at what is behind the image and then I keep scooting it up keep scooting it up and watch what happens when we get into the vicinity of the bubble do you see that you see what happens right there there's an interference of value there is light reflecting on the edge of that bubble now, if I go all the way around the bubble, uh, we'll see various degrees. So I can just, with that, I'm going to take the value scale away now and let you just use your eyes. You can, you can squint. You can see that in some places there's just a little bit of light reflected on the edge of the bubble. In other places there is lots of light reflected on the bubble. Not only that, but you see color in this one. You see color reflected in the bubble. Well, that's all you need to do is to put those little edges of light and color in there and let everything else show through and it will look like a bubble. Now you can see this bubble is kind of wobbly. The shape is not exactly round, but we have some other bubbles here that are almost perfect in, in check, almost perfect little disc. But you see what every one of them, now you look at this one first, uh, is, uh, we can see them very clearly because they are in front of woods which tend to have lots of shadow. So we see more light on the edges, lots of light on the edges. So the kind of how you handle that light on the edges is going to depend upon the light of, of where the bubbles are. So you can't get a formula. You need to use observation. Now we go here to this one. Uh, we, obviously uh, the light, the, the sunlight is um, not shining directly. So we don't get that a lot of that very direct light. We see the bubbles reflecting more shadow. So you see around the edges are darker. 
but you still see through there the image that is behind it. You see whatever is behind it going through and you can see the degree with which you see the dark there would depends on the area in which that bubble is located. So I just want to show you a little bit of how to handle that as far as skill goes. For one thing, if you want the, the bubbles that you're painting, if you want those to be perfectly round, there's nothing wrong with tracing something that's round, maybe the same size. So I'm just going to use this. This is a little uh, a lesson demo that I did not long ago. And I'm just going to use that because it's already painted in. It's dry to touch. So it, I think it will work pretty well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a disc here. Uh, that's sort of in front of the sky and sort of in front of the woods. Now this is a pastel pencil. Pastel pencils work really really good for this sort of thing because they will wipe away. Uh, Conte will not work. It's hard to wipe or take away. Uh, but if you don't want the residue of the pencil left behind, something like a soft pastel will work pretty good. So what I'm going to do here now is sort of use the pastel pencil and just simply trace around. Now usually I don't advise tracing anything but there are some cases where when you want something absolutely symmetrical there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, you can draw it freehand if you practice enough. Let's see, did I make, there we go. You see, now it almost feels like a bubble already because the white of the pencil is uh, taking on the role of reflecting the light. So you see, I really don't have to do a whole lot much more, but I know that pastel won't stay there. I know it's going to go away. So what color is that light? It's, it's pretty much white. You can look here and you can see that it's pretty much white. Some of the beauty, you see right here we have color being reflected. There's some pinks and, and blues being reflected there. So whatever color is being reflected is the color you use. So I'm just going to use here a very, I'm just going to use a, a light neutral. Oh, by the way, also it will make it easier for you if you use a Filbert brush. This is one that uh, has a curved tip, unlike the flat brushes. Use the size of the brush that is most compatible with the size of the bubble. So if you're doing a huge painting and you're doing huge bubbles, you'll use a large size brush. If the bubbles are large but not that big, you'll use a, a, lar a smaller brush than this one. And of course, if the bubbles are, or the area is smaller, the smaller brush, that keeps it from being quite so wieldy. So just touching the, uh, or getting some paint on the tip of the brush this way, and I'm going to get kind of a neutral between these two colors. Uh, and, and you see it's very, very light. Now, Instead of turn, instead of having this part of the brush, the part that I loaded, instead of having that turn towards the canvas, I'm going to turn the unloaded side turn uh, next to the canvas, and that's because we want just an edge. That is a technical thing. That is just something that we learn. It's like learning how to hammer or nail. It's a skill. It's just a skill that you learn to make things a little bit easier for you. So I can go right here. And now I can look, I can use this as a guide, but uh, I can just pull the brush, the tip of the brush, right around there and begin to create that light. And you see, and then I can gradate that light. It's gradated, it's not, it doesn't have an edge on this side. So the light is gradated down into this image right here. So I can gradate that by allowing the part of the brush that doesn't have paint on it to, uh, touch and uh, touch the canvas. Now let me, let me get just a little bit more. I, in fact, I think I'd like a, a little bit warmer. Get a little bit more paint on the tip and turn it around like this and take the coin, the edge of the brush. There we go, right there. You see, and that gives us that gradation and that gives us that feeling of bubble. Now, to the degree, you can see that in these bubbles, you don't see the light reflecting evenly all the way around. We see the light reflecting stronger in some areas and we see it weaker in other areas. So I'll just uh, take the brush and 
Uh, I won't necessarily go all the way around it, but let's just see what happens when we go in this darker area. There it is right there. And we could just sort of take that around. Now I can wipe the brush off. Get all the paint wipe, wiped off with the brush. And using it this way, not this way, but using it with a tip towards towards the edge of paint, I can begin to blend that edge into the bubble part itself. And the more I blend it, the more it has that decrease, that gradual fading of light that we see around the bubble. Uh, and sometimes we see bubbles, uh, well, we see in some of these, we see a little bit more light reflected as the curve of the bubble reaches around and, and uh, catches light. And so what we do there is simply put a little fleck of light, something like that. And once again, to get that more gradated, we touch the edge as it moves around. If we need the edge a little bit sharper, we get it a little bit sharper. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now, one thing I can do right up here is what's going on right here. You see down here, there's more light reflecting. And so we feel that light moving around that transparent globe, we see it feeling a little bit more. So what I'm going to do right here is make that edge a little bit darker like we see it here. So to make it a little bit darker, let me go here and just sort of darken. I'll put some dark right here. Doesn't mean that doesn't need to be really dark because that's sort of in that middle value area. But I want to get this more neutral right here. Let's see, and that's in a blue zone, but what would I see reflecting in that blue zone? I just see a little bit more of that, what's in that cloud color, so I'd see a little bit more of what's in that blue sky color, so I'm just going to add the white. Let's add the white. Now, I want to get that value. Ooh, I think I took it too too light too soon. Let's do it again. Y'all would just add a little bit more dark back into it, and let's get that value. Let's get the value that we need. It's not the darkest dark, Let's see, I can compare it right here. That probably will do it. Let's see how that feels. But you see that's a little cool, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit of yellow. Tiny bit of yellow to warm that up. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Oh, I could use I could use some green. And let's see what that will do. That a little more of that yellow. Yeah, I know I dirtied up my yellow. But I can always wipe it away. All right, now let's see what that will do. So let's rinse the brush to be sure. We don't need much. Don't need much at all. And once again, I'm going to load. I'm going to load the back side of the brush. I'm going to push it just a little bit so I can get that color on the tip. Back side of the brush. And then I'm going to go right to the edge here. You can always control that with your other hand. And if you're not just really steady, with your hand, it's probably a good idea to do that. So you can kind of try and control where it goes by holding your other hand against it and just sort of touch. There we go. There we go. And just let that dark blend into that light that we put there. You see, that's beginning now to feel a little bit like we have this right over here. Now we can see that in here we have a little bit more dark coming down a little bit more into that light. So we can go around and kind of do that, sort of like that. Just let it gradate. So it's a matter of is it if it's a dark bubble, or if it's a, an area where we see the edge is more dark, we need a little dark on the edge, and we need to gradate it down into the lighter. If it's in an area where we can see the bubbles more light, we can gradate the, the light into the dark. And this little technique I showed you of how to load the brush how to use the brush, how to stabilize the brush with your hand. That's a skill you can use for all kinds of things. So it's just another skill to add to your arsenal. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.